Well guys, what I was hoping that we would be doing first thing is going to check out the Great Wall of China that has been completely uh, poured and done. We're a couple days after uh, the first part of this video. Uh, I really want to go out there and show you guys that and give you guys the details. A lot of you guys are interested in that kind of stuff and, and how the whole back parking lot project is, is kind of coming along. But the wall is completely poured. All the forms are down. Uh, it looks really, really good. So I'm excited to kind of show you guys that. But until the rain kind of dies down, uh, I think we're just gonna move on for a little bit. Um, it's Easter Sunday, so happy Easter. Uh, I'm gonna try and get this video up. It might be a little bit later, but uh, probably one of the weirdest uh, Easter Sundays that I've ever had, uh, just because of everything going on in the world, everything shut down, uh, no church, no brunch, no whatever. But anyway, we're in the shop just kind of, kind of piddling around, honestly. Uh, we're getting a couple things done that are kind of just, see the rain, I think, is the rain stopped? Did the rain stop? Did the rain slow down for a little bit? Uh, okay, maybe not, maybe not. But anyway, I've been doing a couple of jobs that are kind of just a pain in the butt to kind of do that take up some time. You know what, I think this is honestly the slowest that the rain is even gonna get. So we are gonna go show you guys this now. Try not to get too, too wet here. So let's go check this out. I apologize, it's a little wet, it's a little rainy. But we're a couple days after they poured uh, the wall, and man, oh man, does it look really, really good. I think they haven't come back and uh, snipped all of the stuff off the side of it and kind of like buffed it down, uh, but or polished it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but man, it looks so, so good. You guys can finally get a sense of what the uh, space kind of looks like now. But I believe we're like something like, I don't know, eight, nine feet in the back. Heck yeah. I think they got like one more day of cleanup to do. And then we can finally start getting the rest of the uh, rest of the thing done. Get all the uh, dirt out of here, get the, uh, get the stone put down, get it leveled. But boy. It's exciting. I don't know if you guys are excited, but I'm pretty excited. They made this slope right here to kind of match the uh, match the lawn in the back. It's really, really nice. All right, let's go walk up top here. Uh, so what they're basically gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna put drainage all behind the wall. There's gonna be a big uh, drain going around the entire back side of the wall and then we're going to kind of put like a basin here a basin here it's going to drain out over there uh, so there won't be any uh, water problems especially this property has water problems to begin with now with water coming basically on this back side of the wall so we're actually going to put another basin up top here or storm storm catch whatever you want to call it but now the rain's actually the rain is kind of calming down a little bit right now but this is a massive, massive wall. So really exciting. I don't know if you guys are excited, but this makes me excited. So here's the uh, pitch that they put in it. And then obviously, I don't know if I've actually told you guys, but the whole point of actually doing a poured wall is so that we can possibly build right on top of the wall for an additional building back here. Who knows when, I'm not really sure when that might be, but just look at the sheer size of this wall. But there she is. The wall is poured and now it's just a matter of uh, doing all the drainage stuff, getting the stone back filled, getting the stone out here in the parking lot. And boys, we will finally be done with guys coming in and out of here, disrupting us. I don't know if the camera does this any justice, but man, we got some we got some room to play now. The trailers can finally go in the back. I'd love to put up this I'd love to put up the building as soon as possible. So if anybody wants to come uh, come put that up for me, hit me up. I haven't convinced uh, the Greg and Kyle RR building show to uh, to show up here yet. That's like a dream. That'd be a dream, but 
Anyway, I think one of you guys actually saw Kyle, told him that I mentioned him, but you guys, you can you can keep blowing up Kyle from RR Buildings and tell him we need to come, him to come out here. But anyway, boys, that's the uh, that's the update on the uh, on the land site. It's coming along. It's finally coming along. Need to do some asphalt repair over here from all the trucks coming in and out. I'd like to pour another concrete section right here to have a full concrete section out in front of this existing shop. Again, all stuff that I'll probably have to wait, but just happy to uh, finally five months later, the rain has just been killing this project, but five months later we're almost, almost there. So hope you guys enjoy that update. Let's get back, let's get back into the shop and let's try and get some, get some work done. Poor Peterbilt over here. Don't worry. We're getting back on you soon, baby. I believe in total between the footer and the wall, I believe it was like 12 full trucks of concrete to do the footer and the wall. Uh, but man, that wall just, it's, it's really shaping up the whole entire area. So uh, it's got me pretty excited, not gonna lie. But anyway, anyway, what have we been doing? We have been working on uh, a couple little miscellaneous projects that really aren't going to be like a full video. So just trying to knock out some kind of crappy work. Um, and then we're going to talk about some other things. So uh, first up, this little guy right here, this uh, plug in the back of the block, which I'll go walk over here and show you guys on our other engine over here. Uh, the freeze plug or the soft plug, whatever you want to call it. Everybody's got a different name for this. But this plug right in the back of your block right here, Normally it goes like that. Well, to do a fleece coolant bypass, you have to knock that out. Uh, sometimes it takes two seconds, sometimes uh, it takes a little bit of time. So we went ahead and pre-knocked this out for when we went to go install that. Um, they say to use a 36 inch um, pry bar and then basically go from, I had the best luck going from the driver side by the drive shaft and kind of shooting it up. I actually used a little bit of a smaller one. Uh, this isn't quite 36, uh, but just a pry bar knocking off, knocking, eh, knocking out that plug. Went ahead and did that because we will be installing a coolant bypass, but let's go over, um, you know what? So what we're doing, <laughs> anyway, bouncing around, bouncing around. What we're getting ready to do now is go ahead and reinstall our front cover. Got that all cleaned up, got our new front main seal. One thing you do not want to forget when you're doing this is Make sure to put your CP3 gear back in the case. You go ahead and put your cover back on, you're not going to fit your gear in uh, through any other way. So I uh, went ahead and just doing a lot of doing a lot of miscellaneous cleaning. Cleaned up the case, cleaned up all the bolts, new front main seal. We're going to go ahead and reinstall that and then do a couple other little things and then go over the fuel system. Uh, last video we did the air side, we kind of went over what we're going to be doing on the air side. After we get this front cover installed, uh, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the fuel side and what we decided to go with and all the sizing options on that. Front cover back on, starting to look like an engine more and more every single time we work on this thing. But anyway, we're gonna go over the fuel side on what we're planning on running. We got the parts right here. We got a, we got a whole bunch of parts here from, from the guys at Fleece. So uh, if you guys want, use my discount code, but we'll go over that stuff a little bit later. Uh, probably not in this video. But anyway, on the fuel side of things, we're using one of their 10 mil CP3s. We'll see if this thing will focus. This is how you know if it's a fleece pump. Right on the uh, right on the shaft it says fleece it says 10 mil pump right on here. We're gonna be using one of their Stroker 10 mil pumps, and for injectors, we actually sent our existing injectors to the guys over at SNS. You guys know we love we love the guys over at SNS, and we turned our used injectors. Thankfully, they were in good enough shape to have them rebuild and test and flow and came back within their specs, kind of right on the edge of their specs, but uh, these are now 80% over injectors. What I'm gonna do too is actually, I'm going to post a link right above here to another video. Uh, way, way back when we did our whole uh, fleece tour, me and Braden actually walked through uh, CP3 land and kind of went over every single little detail on their 10 mil pump uh, with you guys. But uh, super, super nice 
nice unit uh, based off a brand new pump. Their own uh, shaft is in here. Uh, really, just a really, really nice pump. Now they do rate these up to 750. I believe they probably have been a little bit more, but I, what I wanted to kind of do and kind of show you guys is uh, what a 10 millimeter pump will support on this truck. True numbers, true power numbers. When we're done with the truck, we're gonna hit the dyno. Um, now, normally what I would do is I would pair a 10 mil pump probably with a little bit of a smaller injector, maybe a 60% over injector. But later down the road when we're out of CP3, uh, I may want to either upgrade to a bigger one or add another one on top of this. Uh, you guys know we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna make some power with this thing. But I wanted to kind of show you guys this 10 mil pump right off the bat because it is one of the nicest pumps out there. Uh, like I said, super high quality pump. And um, what I get asked a lot, here's what I really wanted to get into. So what I get asked a lot is, I want to make 650, I want to make 700, I want to make 750. Like I get those questions asked all the time. Um, and it's mostly pertaining to fuel system. So. What a lot of people don't understand is your factory CP3 uh, pretty much stops uh, flowing fuel, I think even before 3000 or right at 3000. So uh, a lot of times people will upgrade to a CP3K, uh, which kind of eliminates that uh, falling off at that RPM. Now, the next step up in pump size is a 10 mil stroker pump. Now, if you guys wanna make over 600 horsepower or give or take just a little bit, you will have to upgrade your CP3. There's just no way around it. The factory, CP3s or CP3Ks, basically a, a standard size uh, non-stroker 10 mil pump will stop making power somewhere along those lines. Even if you have a little bit bigger injector, you might be able to get that up a little bit higher, but you're just gonna start losing rail pressure. And that's basically the main point of an upgraded CP3 is to maintain rail. So you may have an air dog, which is supplying your proper low pressure uh, system, proper fuel pressure. Uh, but as soon as it gets to the CP3 and you start commanding a lot of it, you're gonna need a unit that is going to wanna keep up. So 10 mil pump is basically your first real uh, upsize in a CP3. So with a single 10 mil, with a single 10 mil pump, you can probably, uh, depending on, I mean, there's a lot of different variables when you get into that kind of stuff. So I don't want to basically label a number. Fleece puts a 750 horsepower number on this pump with the correct size injectors and all that. Um, if you guys really want to cap your power around 7750, there's no real need to go to really 80% overs, but the fact that we want to go a little bit further down the line, I don't want to kind of short, or short ourselves a little bit. We could have even gone a little bit bigger, uh, but to pair with a 10 mil pump, I would say 80% and down uh, would be fine. Again, it's all going to come down to a lot of tuning, stuff like that, but um, super pumped to kind of show you guys a true 10 mil pump. This is what it's going to do. We have enough fuel and air. Um, really, I think rail pressure when we start getting up into some higher stuff is going to be uh, really, it's, it's going to be interesting to show you guys that kind of firsthand on the dyno doing all that kind of stuff. So uh, super pumped to be running a 10 mil pump. Uh, one thing that we did do uh, and that I highly suggest and recommend that you do is you can kind of see how nice and shiny this pump is. And what we did is we actually spent a little bit of time uh, earlier today. Uh, we threw a layer of clear coat down on top of it. We actually did the same thing on the uh, pumps on the 05. And you can kind of see a couple years later or whenever it was that we put this together, they still look still look pretty brand new. Now, if you guys have ever gotten a CP3 or you look at the CP3 on your truck, these things tend to rust up pretty fast. So do yourself a favor, if you go ahead and get a pump or anything, make sure you guys like throw some clear coat, obviously tape everything off, but throw some clear coat on it. It will preserve your pump looking like crap in a hurry. So again, pairing these with a set of SNS modified well they're not they're not truly SNS injectors I will say that they are are used injectors that SNS basically tested for us and uh, went ahead and installed the nozzles and then balanced them all so Another point that I wanna kinda of bring up to you guys is I get this question asked all the time and I know we're kinda of spending a little bit of time on talking and we did on the last video um, we'll get into that later, but um, I wanna kinda hit on some of these important things for you guys. Now, when you guys send injectors to, well, let me back up, let me back up, let me back up, sorry, sorry. 
First question is, hey, do you think it'll be okay putting nozzles on my bodies there? Is 20, 30, 20,000 miles on them, 30,000 miles on them, there's 100,000 miles on them. So these bodies that were in this truck, um, I believe they were a, a Cummins Reman injector uh, that, I, that I got like way, way back in the day. These aren't the original injectors. They have, they probably have at least 100,000 miles on them. So I was unsure of if they were even going to come back with in spec. Now, this is how they do it. This is how they do it. They get the injectors in and they test them um, electronically to make sure the electronic part of your injector is firing. This would be right here, your electronic part that uh, fires your injector. And then they see if they have any high returns in them, which might, I think, uh, tell them that there is some mechanical uh, wear in the injector. Now, if everything kind of passes in that aspect, either electronically or mechanically, then we can go to see if uh, we can upgrade the nozzles and do all that. Now, I think the story with mine is, and I can't remember that we've had them for a little while now, is they were barely within spec. Now, you want all of your injectors to be within a certain, I believe they cap it at like four or five percent. I don't, don't hold me to any of that, but you want them all to flow in that same percentage because if one is at here and one is over here, they're not gonna be very balanced and your truck is not gonna perform uh, to the optimal percentage or you, you, guys get the, you guys get the idea. I don't, I don't need to get into super technical facts here. Uh, you want them all to be around the same. You want them to be performing well. Uh, that way when you, uh, anyway, there's a whole long list of stuff that I could get into, but it's important to me and it makes me sleep better at night if you have injectors with some miles on them that you go get them tested first, get a clean bill of health, and then when you, they put the nozzles on, have them float and balanced. So when they flow them and they balance them, that's the fine tuning tweaks to kind of make sure that everything is within spec and that when I go to put these things in, I know that we won't have any problems. So. Anyway, long, little long-winded there on that, but the 80% overs from SNS should make some pretty good power. You guys know what 100% overs did in that truck? Um, almost did, almost did a thousand. So I didn't really want to go super, super crazy. I don't intend on this truck making a thousand horsepower. Um, so I think 80% is a good, is a good kind of uh, medium between like 40s. So you, can, you guys can, you guys can get like 40s, 60s, 80s. Uh, they kind of have them all over the place. So if you're really never wanting to push over, you know, say 750, 700, like I, I don't even think you need to go to 80%. But that is the fueling arrangement that we are going to be using and like i said we're going to be hitting the dyno we are going to be testing everything out and showing you guys uh true power numbers so that is the long-winded spiel of the fuel side of what we are going to be running you guys know that we always trust sns to do all of our uh, injector work we got new injectors for the new 05 engine we've got sns's in that we're gonna have sns in this SNS and everything, uh, but here is the sheet, the flow sheet of how they test everything and kind of just showing the variance between all of the injectors, which I feel is well worth the importance of sending them in. Um, there they are, these beautiful babies, our beautiful sexy 10 mil pump. Uh, like I said, coolant bypass. We got some other cool stuff over here. We'll maybe get into that. Um, fuel pump block off plate, got our grid heater delete plate, and these pulleys that are going to make the front of this engine just look so beautiful. So again, if you guys need anything from Fleece, use my code, it'll save you some money. We got some valve train stuff up there that we're gonna be running. So not that a lot of you guys care, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because some of you guys do care. There's been a lot of stuff going on in the background as far as house projects go that I've been trying to give Allie a hand on. We basically had a uh, water shut off valve in the one of the upstairs bathrooms, well, the, the main level, uh, fail while we were kind of renovating. And basically we had to rip down the entire basement ceiling. We were getting that fixed, we're painting so uh, it's been a lot of stuff going on in the background as far as trying to get that stuff wrapped up um, and it's Easter so we're gonna spend some time with the family this weekend so uh, I know the last two videos have been a little on the shorter side have been a little bit of talking uh, but don't worry I think we're pretty much kind of wrapping up a lot of the house and outside stuff the outside guys have been here all day all night kind of going back and forth with them a little bit so it's been there's been some distractions but anyway 
Uh, coming up this week, we are going to get back on it. We're actually going to be getting our hands dirty, doing some more work, and giving you guys full videos and getting back on the schedule. But anyway, that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Hit the like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you guys tomorrow. See you.